Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Our Father, we give you praise. We bless your holy name. We thank you because you are God who answers prayer. We thank you that you have graciously looked to us in mercy to answer the cry of our hearts day by day as to visit us beyond our expectation. We want to thank you again that this day, another day that you have brought our way in which we will rejoice and be glad in it, celebrating your faithfulness. We look to you, O God, from the beginning to the end of it. Indeed, as a maiden looks upon the hand of her mistress and a servant upon the hand of his master, we are totally dependent on you. We are leaning completely on your everlasting arms. We ask that in our weakness again, we will know your sufficiency. We ask that your grace indeed again will be sufficient for us. Uh, we pray for all our brethren. Our heart goes out to our brethren who are gathered in very remote places where uh, connectivity to the internet is uh, usually a challenge. Uh, may they not be disadvantaged on account of your loving kindness and mercy. We pray, O oh God, today again that you will graciously unveil our hearts as we turn to you and you will reveal yourself unto us beyond what we can ever imagine possible. Uh, be exalted and magnified. Uh, blessed be your name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. According to the New King James Version, I'm reading Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11, therefore. Uh, now when uh, Jesus and his disciples drew near Jerusalem uh, to Bethphage and uh, Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples. And Jesus said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered into the village, you will find a court tied on which no man, uh, no one has sat. Lose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the court tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing loosing the court? And they spoke to them, 
just as Jesus had commanded them. So they let them go. Then they brought the court to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked round at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. May the Lord grant us the benefit of the ministry of his word to each of our hearts uh, this morning, uh, causing it to prosper in whatsoever he is specifically sending it and causing it to bring forth abundance of fruit from every seed of the word he will be sowing in our hearts. In fact, all through the remaining hours we have for the MLR in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Ride on my back Ride on my back, Jesus Christ, you are my Lord. I am your court, and I'm tied to your will. I am yours, ride on my back. Ride on my back, oh Lord, ride on my back. Jesus Christ, you are my Lord. Forever I am your court, and I'm tied to your will. I am yours, ride on my back. Ride on my back, ride on my back. Jesus, ride on my back. Jesus Christ, you are my Lord, forever I am your court, and I'm tied to your will. I am yours, ride on my back. Uh, we've just read the uh, Mark chapter 11, and uh, we've also sung the song itself to say it's not about an animal. Uh, we are that court that he must ride into glory. He must ride into the fulfillment of his purpose. He must ride to correct every situation in our various lands, our various fields, our various domains. Uh, we are that court that he must use in order to express himself. Um, I would like us to remember that uh, yesterday God began to uh, point out to us the necessity of discipleship because of the necessity for us to be like Jesus, be conformed to his image, uh, to his likeness, so that we can be available for God's purpose in the same measure, in the same uh, quality that Jesus uh, was in his Jewish body at his first coming. Uh, 
we noted that uh, he's asking us to first of all uh, come that we may be with him, uh, to be with him. Uh, we saw yesterday that uh, the reason for which he is calling us to come engage our lives to learn of him and to learn through a practical uh, illustration of uh, who he is in the life of another human disciple of Jesus that uh, is learning him uh, ahead of our coming uh, to come to learn of him is because he wants to not only uh, become our life as he becomes when we receive him, uh, when we become born of God in Christ, but he is also desiring that everything about us will be conformed to his person that we will be like him in all things, and that that will be what we measure our own maturity, our full growth uh, in the life God wants us to carry. But this growth must come through uh, a learning process, a training process that is of a practical nature, uh, showing us uh, how to interpret the principles of the life of Christ in uh, everyday, uh, ordinary situations of human life, in our various environments of uh, professional practice, of uh, social uh, belonging, uh, at the various points of the expression of our lives that we have opportunity to bring forth. God wants us to learn uh, to experience the life of Christ and to live that life uh, in all respects. It's for this purpose that he has called us into discipleship. In uh, Mark's Gospel chapter 3, he called the first set that he called. I want to make reference to their own calling as to point out what God wants to emphasize for us uh, this morning as we go on to pray. Now, in verse 13 of the chapter 3, the Bible says that Jesus went up uh, on the mountain and he called to him those he himself wanted, and they came to him. Uh, those he called, of course, uh, were those who had shown and expressed uh, practical willingness to come to Jesus to learn of him. But he had to pray to know whom he will actually uh, receive or admit uh, into this uh, practical relationship uh, to learn the life that he carried in a practical manner. And the Bible said, then he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out <coughs> devils uh, and the names of the people to tell us they were tangible, genuine, real, and uh, the ordinary human beings people knew uh, that were admitted now into discipleship, having first of all, received Christ Jesus as their Savior. Now, this morning, we are noting that uh, God uh, has already 
plan from the beginning that the man he is making will be his instrument of service, his means of manifesting himself, his means of accomplishing his own uh, task upon the earth, his means of uh, revealing himself uh, by the character of the life, uh, his means of doing what he will do uh, through uh, the life of that human being. We saw that from the beginning, uh, God was very, very uh, involving uh, with the man. He was very deeply involved with the man he made and uh, would uh, hardly do anything on earth without coming to consult with the man and coming to involve the man and even have the man make imputes of uh, his own counsel and contribution uh, to participate in the decision making and uh, be the one God we use to do it. Uh, by this and in this manner God was tending the Garden of Eden through the man. In this way God was naming every creature he made through the man. In this way, God uh, was naming uh, even the fowls of the air, the birds of the air, through the man. In this way, God was defining the destiny of everything he created. And uh, we observed uh, that that uh, dependence, his own uh, deliberate, willing uh, dependence on the instrument uh, that is called man to do his work upon the earth and to reveal himself upon the earth, uh, God continued to seek uh, to pursue it. Uh, yesterday we saw that that's how he uh, entered into an intimate friendship with those who offer themselves uh, to be uh, instruments in the hand of God, uh, to walk with Him, to be close to Him, to be intimate with Him, and to be dependent upon Him. That's how He continued to uh, find men that uh, He can use upon the earth to achieve His purpose upon the earth. It's in this way that uh, we saw the life of uh, Enoch. All of them had to know that he is, had to come to the assurance that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him and be committed to depending wholly on him and be consecrated altogether for God to be the one who possesses and who uses them, who works in them, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, it's in this manner we saw a man like Enoch. We saw a man like Noah. We came to know a person like a Job. We came to know a man like uh, Abraham. It's in this wise a Moses became an instrument in the hand of God. Now, but each of them had to first be with him. They had to learn to come out of whatever preoccupied them before, to concentrate on being with God, on learning to know Him, on understanding how to live in a manner that is acceptable to Him, that pleases Him, that is in harmony with His person. They had to be transformed progressively to be a willing instrument for God uh, to... Uh, manifest himself and to easily bring his purpose to pass using their lives as instruments in his hand. They became his uh, battle axe and instruments of war. Uh, they, he became, they became the people he will use uh, to do anything he will do upon the earth. And when he will not find such an instrument that he called a man, he will be asking, he sought for a man, but he found none. When he won't find such an instrument 
of the kind that he had conceived, who would be wholly committed to simply living for God and allowing God the limitless control and the limitless direction of his life, uh, then, only then, though God was willing, he could do nothing in the earth. Uh, though he was concerned, though it pained God, uh, he could only watch the earth to decay and enter into confusion. Now, we are noting that, but first and foremost, uh, the life he called was to be with him, to tie himself to him, to take the yoke of the Lord upon himself, to learn of him, and to be conformed to who he is. Uh, yesterday we read the Matthew chapter 11, and we saw that after verse 28, where Jesus said, Come to me, I will give you rest. I will give you the life that is of the Prince of Peace. I will give you the life that is already delivered from every bondage of darkness. I will deliver you by the life, my life that I will give you, so that you will be delivered from every power of darkness and moved under the, uh, from under the kingdom of darkness, from under the dominion of darkness, to be positioned uh, in the kingdom of of light, the kingdom where Jesus is the prince and uh, the, the Lord and uh, the, the ruler, uh, whose in kingdom, the increase of it and the increase of his peace, there is no end. Uh, he said, come unto me, I will give you a place where you are rested, where you are protected, you are covered. But then in verse 29, he said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Uh, for uh, I am meek and lowly in heart. And as you learn of me and you practically get conformed to the way I am meek and lowly in heart, you will continually discover rest unto your soul. Uh, we explained yesterday that this is rest from all anxieties of life, rest from the distractions of this world, uh, rest from a lack of focus in life, uh, rest from uh, the distractions of self. Uh, you will rest because you are focused and you are content in the Lord. You will be rested from covetousness uh, when you have learned of Christ. You'll be rested from a life that is focused on the countables of this life, uh, focused on the things that perish with the using, uh, but whose affections are now set on things above, uh, on the things which endure forever and ever. You'll be rested as you are learning to be conformed to Jesus in his mind, in his thoughts, in his uh, attitude, in his understanding, and as you are conformed to Jesus in his ways, conformed to him in your responses, in your character and your conduct, you are conformed to Christ. Rest will be your portion from one situation of life to another until you have also practically known full rest in all circumstances of your life like Jesus. Now, it was after that, that in verse 30, he said that for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, this morning, I want you to know, first and foremost, that uh, it is God who wants to be at work upon the earth and not man. It is God who wants to work in man, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is God who is establishing his kingdom and righteousness upon the earth. But he made man to be his instrument to do it. Uh, the relevance of your life, uh, the relevance of my life as a human being, is to be the uh, container, the apparatus, 
the device uh, that God has fabricated, which he is using uh, to think according to his thoughts, he is using uh, to uh, direct according to his ways, and he is using to accomplish what he will do according to his own power and by his own spirit. Uh, my relevance as a human being is the extent to which it is no longer I who is living, but it is God in Christ Jesus who is living and operating what is his longing and desire to do every moment, such that every word I speak, uh, it is him who is expressing himself. And uh, so that there is nothing that I am particularly about for myself or for anyone else. There's nothing I am pursuing that is personal. Every pursuit is the pursuit by God and for God. Now, this was important for us to note this morning to understand why we needed first to step into discipleship uh, and we are stepping into it first of all because of a need to conform the whole of our being, body, soul, and spirit to the likeness of the Almighty, to the image of Jesus, to conform ourselves to who he is, uh, as we noted yesterday, to the extent that as he is in heaven, actually so we are here on earth. And to the extent that, uh, like we saw in Jesus, uh, when he was wearing the the Jewish body in his first coming. Uh, the same way now that it is our body he is carrying, we will see that it is not uh, by our own uh, imagination, our own arrangement, and for our own interest that we say anything at all, or we do anything at all, or we imagine anything at all, but uh, it is as we see him in heaven, uh, speaking, guiding, directing. It's in counsel with him, understanding which way he wants to go, what he wants to do, what he wants to say, and receiving orders uh, to correctly offer him our bodies uh, so that they will do his will. It is only in this manner we will be living our lives. Now, I noted, therefore, that uh, it is for this reason that uh, God made you, that God made me. And it is for this reason he sent Jesus to recover us from our loss uh, and our dead state of life, to recover us out of darkness into light, to bring us back to the meaning for which he made us back to the life we were expected to carry and the uh, way in which we were expected to express it. Uh, this is the reason he sent Jesus. And the first thing Jesus did was to pay the price with his own life uh, in a human body so that by the sacrifice he made, uh, as many as believe on him, as many as uh, accept uh, to be identified with what he has done and to benefit from it by faith, uh, his death becomes the end of the life, the old human life uh, we were carrying. And his uh, burial becomes the burial of that life out of sight. His uh, resurrection, which he also... Uh, accomplished uh, not for himself uh, should be the basis of our springing into newness of life carrying his own life now uh, and we can say I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but it is Christ that lives in me and the life which I am now living physically it is by the expression of Christ, by the uh, connection with him, faith in him, and uh, our dependence consciously 
on uh, his life, his power, his grace. I am living by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to me. Uh, the life which I now live, I am living by the faith of the Son of God. Now, so I am observing with us this morning a necessity, a necessity that is not actually um, something uh, we should consider uh, casually. It's uh, what determines whether uh, you actually are meaningfully living, you are meaningfully existing, or you actually have no meaning in life uh, because he created and recreated us so that the original purpose for us to be his means of expression on earth might be redeemed, might be restored, might be recovered, so that now in Christ Jesus, it is possible for each one of us to only see the purpose of our living on earth as the opportunity for us to glorify God, the opportunity for us to allow him to manifest himself in us. Uh, for this reason, now, as we get to the point of the emphasis we must take and pray, for this reason, each person who receives this life has only collected the basis to begin to know how to manifest it, how to express it, how to offer it to God as uh, a living sacrifice for him to do with our life as he intended from the beginning. Uh, the reason for which, for each one of us, it is very crucial that we should take the yoke of Christ and learn how to carry that his life practically, manifest it practically, relate with the Father in the manner he did, and uh, enter into the fullness of the practical relevance of our having received Jesus. Uh, we are noting that this is the reason each one of us must come to be with him. When God began to make the emphasis of coming to be with him in discipleship. He made it very, very clear that this is by far more important than whatever he may send us to do. And I can recall when uh, I became so burdened about 20 years back because of what there was to do that God sent me to do as uh, one of the disciples. Uh, and I was... I was overwhelmed by the, the need to, to, to do the work. I was seeing the need as being the need of money, the need of uh, good communication gadgets, the need of good uh, transportation, the need of uh, uh, the utterance I need to have so that uh, with one utterance, uh, the thing is settled everywhere uh, in all the 11 states of the eastern region at the time so that I'm not needing to repeat any utterance any day, uh, how that uh, there will be such enabling by God that uh, my effectiveness uh, is, uh, is uh, by fire by fire. But my effectiveness is, is uh, so, so, so great, so effective. Uh, and as I prayed, God said, you actually missed it. I didn't call you to be an effective preacher. I only called you to be with me. I called you to learn of me. I called you to be conformed to who I am. I called you to come and, and be growing in more and more intimacy of uh, your relationship with me. I called you to be with me. I may send you, and when I send you, you won't need to worry how what I sent you to do will happen. It is me that will be working you to will and to do it. Uh, that's none of your business. And what I will use when I send you is my business to arrange. Your business is to follow me. Your business is to be with me. 
uh, I'm beginning to realize right here in the Mark 3 we read as well, that the court God will ride upon must be a court that was first of all committed to waiting and uh, learning and following and becoming more and more uh, conducive for the master. A wind from the use of anything else uh, progressively delivered from any other uh, usurper. A court on which never a man sat. A court that was was preserved for the master. A court that has learned to be wholly available to God. That has learned to consecrate his tongue only for God. That has learned to consecrate his eyes to only look for God. Has learned to consecrate his ears to only hear for God. Has learned to consecrate his legs to only go for God has learned to eat for God and to live his whole life, to wear his cloth for God. And I saw that it was when we dwell with Jesus and we learn of him that he brings us to this. But even when he's committing what he will say occasionally, go in my name and do this, he is wanting us to know that the most important uh, basis qualification uh, that we must continue to hold dear and walk, walk uh, always deeper and deeper on it uh, is not to be overwhelmed by what we are sent to do but to focus on how even in doing it we are learning to be more and more like him we are learning to know him deeper and deeper better and better we are learning to walk with him more and more. We are learning to become more adapted to him to the point of having a long relationship uh, that will make us to never want to bring any disappointment to his heart, never want to offend him for any reason, never want, uh, rather prefer to die than to cause God any any loss, any surprise by whatever we may have done. Uh, a love relationship that cherishes his smile, uh, cherishes his, uh, his uh, good uh, visage uh, over us uh, in the closet as we commune with him, that loves uh, to hear a good uh, commendation from him concerning us and the relationship of friendship uh, that watches, watches diligently over everything that was his own pleasure, his own interest, his own benefit, uh, that is, is keen on uh, bringing him all the goodwill by all that you do. A growth that grows in intimacy. Uh, I found is what God was looking for. Why do we learn this from Christ? I saw that with Jesus, uh, he had weaned himself from anything to do with uh, position, wasn't looking for position, he wasn't looking for uh, any uh, reputation for his life uh, among uh, human beings. He was not looking for uh, service from others. He wasn't looking for a, a, an enjoyment of the kind that others are the ones serving him. Uh, he made himself uh, a servant. He took upon him the form of a servant. He humbled himself. All of this just to adapt himself to the kind of instrument that God will use anywhere, anytime, anyhow, in the midst of anyone. Uh, and I saw that with Jesus, God became so persuaded that this is the kind of man I need. This is the kind of, of instrument I want to use. Uh, because uh, he saw that Jesus is ready to serve the Father even unto death. Uh, to serve him, obey him, even unto the death of the cross. And uh, when the father came to this conclusion, he could give him any name he chose. 
even if the name is above all the names in heaven, uh, the names on earth are underneath the earth, and that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord, and God knew that every power Jesus wields, every honor that uh, he puts on him, all the glory that he covers him with, that all of it, it is still he, the Father, that will enjoy it. It is still he, the Father, that will receive the benefit, uh, the profit of it, to the glory of God the Father. God wants our discipleship uh, growth uh, to come to the point where God can entrust us with any honor, can entrust us with any name, can entrust us with any glory, and yet know this, that we have become such intimate uh, confidants, such intimate friends, such intimate uh, lovers, uh, such intimate uh, partners uh, in life that uh, he can depend on us uh, to, at all times, only go for him. And again, I am hearing God saying, for this reason, he is looking for those who will grow in knowing uh, him, in becoming like Jesus, to the point that he can confide in them to any extent. Now, are you there? You are even yet to step uh, very uh, willingly into this relationship of discipleship to learn Christ. And please note, as we observed yesterday, you can't learn Christ in abstraction. You can't learn Christ by imagination or by extrapolation from what the Bible is saying. You can only practically know Jesus through a life that Jesus is operating in and manifesting that aspect he wants you to learn about. And I observe that each one of us must come into this practical learning. Why? Only by this will God multiply the kind of disciples he's talking about who are like a multiplication of the same Jesus, not in a Jewish body uh, only, but now in a, a Nigerian body, in a Ghanaian body, in a Malawian body, in a South African body, in a Canadian body, in a, a, a Chinese body, in a body of, of a life from anywhere on the planet. And he will be scattered everywhere, giving God opportunity to achieve his purpose and his cancer. Today, I would like us to note, uh, we are not pursuing that we may overtake and recover anything for ourselves. And what was lost was not our own. Uh, what the real loss is the loss of God, the loss of God's own purpose, the loss of uh, his uh, plan concerning the earth, the loss of the life of righteousness he planned that should be manifest upon the earth, the loss of his government, the loss of his control and his direction over all the affairs of every creature. And God wants us to know, if we are not wholly representing God, if it is not for Him we are pursuing, if we have not become intimate confidants of God who live and operate only for His own pleasure, we cannot be recruited for this pursuit. This pursuit is not for personal gain. This pursuit is not even for our personal comfort. This pursuit is not for our own personal glory or honor. It's not for our own personal enjoyment. Whether he uh, conquered a, a position and put any of us there, he is expecting that it will be him there achieving his own purpose, enjoying the benefit, the Almighty. He is expecting that it will be Jesus who will be that traditional ruler in that domain, and that everything happening there is to his own glory alone. He'll be expecting that it will be Jesus 
who became the president of Nigeria. Uh, and it is by uh, that instrument that he is bringing his purposes to rule over the country, or who became a minister, uh, perhaps in Ghana or in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, and it will be what he wants to achieve that he's doing. Who became a business magnet in the earth. All the proceeds, he has a plan of what he wants to do. All the glory coming on that life is channeled to the Almighty. And the life remains a life that has no celebration or position, no celebration or reputation, no appetite for any personal glory or honor, and is living only that God might be glorified. He wants you to be a court who is only taking where he wants to go. He wants you to be a court that is only showcasing him. He is only writing on that court to go where he will go. That all the glory, everything he's bringing around, that it will be for him to draw his own honor, his majesty by it. But this can only be possible if first of all you have accepted to become a disciple of Jesus unto death. And your interest is to grow in discipleship until God can entrust you with all he entrusted to Jesus and suffer no loss and have no reason uh, to uh, consider that he has put himself at risk. You will grow in discipleship that he might send you, might give you power uh, to heal the sick or cast out devils, but that primarily he has a confidant. Anytime he has something to be accomplished, he will say, I have one of my council members, one of my confidants, one of my instruments that I am possessing with all assurance that is located there. I can bring this to pass. And he comes to commune with you and to tell you what to do so that like Christ, uh, you can of yourself do nothing. Now, are you out there and you thought that what we are pursuing is for you to become richer for yourself? What we are pursuing is for you to uh, win the election for your glory, for your own honor, or for your own power. You are a power-hungry fellow, and you thought that uh, God should also allow Christians to also have power now, so that we can enjoy power. No, you missed it. Uh, God is the one that must reign. God is the one that must possess all. God must be the one who is pursuing his purpose through each one of our lives. But this can only be possible when you are wholly under his control. When you are a court that is tied to his will. When he only loses you to take you to where he wants you to go. And when it's true, he ties you back. And you are only living to fulfill his counsel in any way he chooses in your life. Are you deciding today that this actually is your choice? Is the decision you want to make? Are you repenting today from thinking you even become like Jesus in order to acquire for yourself? Uh, that would be a strange Jesus. Uh, are you repenting today from just wanting to be a disciple so that you have power to heal the sick and cast out devils? Or to preach powerful messages. No, uh, the purpose is beyond this. It's intimacy. It's being a conf confidant of God. It's becoming his own intimate, trusted friend. It's to become a life that is so in harmony and so at peace, uh, so uh, acceptable to God that he can rely on you to achieve whatever he chooses, wherever he chooses to use you. He wants every human being to be like this. Now, so there's no exception to this rule. Uh, it's not that some believers can be like this, uh, or that some human beings can. Whoever is not like this is a reject. He 
has uh, actually turned out a scrap from the process of God's making. Uh, he has uh, failed to become a useful instrument that God could use in the earth. That's why such scraps will be packed and thrown into hellfire. And uh, it's like the incinerator will take care of them. Since they have an eternal soul, they'll be burning forever and ever. That's why such can never have a future with God. You won't have a future with God now, nor in eternity, unless you understand that you're possessing the life of Christ and you're learning to express Christ in your own physical life is what is necessary for you to be relevant. Uh, otherwise, you have actually been a man that was called to honor who was called to be the expression of God, but uh, you lacked knowledge. Uh, you knew nothing of it. In fact, you despised it. The Bible says a man being in honor and knoweth not is like a brute beast that will simply exist and perish for no record. Uh, a brute beast. Brother, sister, don't be a brute beast. Uh, God is saying, this is the reason for which we exist, and this is the purpose for which he is calling us to himself in Christ. Would you like to pray today with uh, us as we are praying, with uh, me here, with all the leaders in the various on-site centers, with all my brethren around me? Would you like to ask that God will realign your heart? Uh, we please give you wisdom. We deliver you from foolishness. Any life lived not for God is wasted. He never made you to just be there for just anything and everything. Uh, he made you for himself, created all things indeed for his own pleasure. Would you like to confess to God that you wasted many years? But now, Jesus must be the life you carry if he's not already that life. Jesus must be the example of who you must be. Jesus must begin to uh, order your steps to learn of him so that you can actually be conformed to who he is and become the man, the woman God created that you should be in his image and likeness and uh, have the dominion to serve his purpose upon the earth. Only such will have a part in this pursuing, pursuing to overtake and recover all. That's why he must multiply disciples, but not disciples with any kind of mentality. Disciples that know that the whole earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Disciples that know that their own life is not theirs, that they are not their own, and that they are only living to glorify God if they are living correctly. Disciples who are daily learning to be more and more perfectly instruments by which the Father is manifesting himself. The Father is happy to be invisible. But in a physical world, he can only reveal himself by the instruments he has. And here on earth, he chose us man. It's a big privilege. And this privilege, if you fail or fall out of it, you've fallen out of your grace. You've missed your place. And you are going to be living a life that is without sense, without meaning, uh, without purpose. And you won't know the joy of uh, being a man, a woman uh, in the hand of God. Uh, if you want to take a decision on this, and I ask that you do, would you like to quietly stand where you are as we want to pray to conclude this? And as we want to look to God to show us mercy for the rest of the day and to take us on to pray more and more as uh, we'll be praying further from here. And as you are standing, I want to pray with you where you are. As you are standing to say, Lord, either I didn't understand. I, I thought uh, it, you are making a big uh, uh, demand on my life. I didn't know this is really what I personally needed to be uh, relevant, to be authentic, to be a genuine human being, to be the correct species of being 
that is a man or woman that God has designed upon the earth. Today, I want Jesus to be my life. And today, I want you to show me the human hand that I should also come under to practically learn to know you. And help me to also humble myself and learn through that human hand. And help me to focus on so learning to know you until everything about me will finish. It will only be you that anybody sees anywhere, whatever I'm involved in, and uh, any day that uh, you give me opportunity to live here on earth. Let us pray together. Father, we commend each and every one of us into your hand. Uh, you have clearly told us that what you are looking for and the process to bring us there, you have shown to us. You want us to grow to become intimate, trusted com confidants, uh, friends that you can lean on here on earth. You want us to grow to be the kind of lives that you cannot fear, suffer uh, a suffering of damage of any, any kind. Lives that will always uh, live for your glory, for your pleasure. And that's why you are calling us into discipleship to grow steadily. Grow until we can be trusted to be sent by heaven. Grow until we can be trusted with your power but grow beyond there to become such perfect uh, friends that we are one with you as Jesus is one with you in heaven. Lord, we pray, help each of our lives to at least be in the process. We thank you because the reason you are speaking like this is because the time for you to arise, to pursue, to overtake and recover all has come to recover all that your kingdom has lost, to recover all that your righteousness has lost, to recover all that your own rule and dominion has lost, to recover all that we have ourselves lost in who we should be in your hand for you to be glorified by us. Receive honor and glory because you will do this, because this is the time. The time has come. The time to arise and remember us is here. Thank you for doing beyond our understanding. Be exalted and magnified forevermore. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.